you're looking to get the latest updates from Microsoft 365, but don't want to spend hours sifting through the hundred or so announcements like me, stay tuned because in this episode, I'm going to be covering all the latest updates, changes, and enhancements that you don't want to miss. Okay guys, so diving in here, just a quick reminder, I do supplement these videos with a blog post down below with more helpful information about all these announcements, so be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Getting into it here though, we're going to start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This first announcement is related to some more flexibility and control on what you're sharing in your screen. You can see that here in the screenshot where you can actually toggle on your actual screen share as well as other participants to give you more flexibility in what you're presenting. Timelines on this one's mid-April, be complete by late April. Speaking of updates, guys, we've been making a lot of updates to Cloud Capsule, which is the application that I built here that allows you to streamline your security assessments across your customers. The average tenant completes in under 90 seconds and maps to over 100 data points in Microsoft and popular frameworks like the CIS controls. We recently added some updates here for this concept called Playbooks, which acts as a roadmap for remediations in the findings that we have within the tenant that you can actually leverage to present to your customers for deriving certain levels of project work, but it gets into more of the why and the individual findings from the tenant that you can showcase to the customer and exportable report, as well as a runbook for remediations that you can take a look at from the policies that you can put into place. So if this looks interesting and you wanna check this out, go to cloudcapsule.io and sign up to run a free assessment today. Next one here is related to users being able to report messages as security concerns within their Teams chat. This is specifically designed around external participants being in your Teams messages here. I've seen a lot of Teams phishing in the past, which is maybe why they introduced this, but I don't see this being used widely. It is available though, and those messages would go into the Teams Admin Center to review. This will happen early May and be complete by mid-May. Next one here is live chat. This is something we've talked about in a previous update video, but this is now going GA across the entire world. This is something built for small businesses where you can have live chat embedded into your website. Specifically, it's for companies that will have 25 or under 25 users that would be leveraging live chat. It's a hard requirement there, but this is something that you could begin to play around with and incorporate into your website. Next one here is this chat at nearby, which is incorporating Microsoft Places, which is the functionality that comes as part of your licensing for um, hybrid or on-site workers where you can dictate that you're in a specific office or specific room. And this allows you to at nearby to see who's actually in the office that day, which is pretty cool. Timeline on this one is uh, public preview starting in April, but no GA timelines yet. Next one here is extending the experience we have currently today in individual chats or group chats where we've converted the file tab at the top to shared. I think this is helpful for admins in case you get users asking where the files tab go. It's now known as shared and they'll have some additional functionality as part of that that you can see here in the screenshot such as links that were shared and separation there, recent filters, as well as being able to click on those files and go directly to where that was sent within the Teams chat itself. So this will happen mid-May and be complete by mid-June. Last one here is for Microsoft Teams Premium users with an integration into Microsoft Bookings, which is the scheduling functionality that comes part of your Microsoft licensing that you can bake in. This is something that incorporates SMS for reminders, which is why it's part of these Teams announcements. But this is additionally adding a feature called Q, which allows schedulers and admins to basically have a consolidated view of all the appointments during the day and maximize the time that's available. So this will happen mid-April and be complete by late April. Shifting into Microsoft Outlook here, this is new Outlook experience where they're automatically gonna start dismissing reminders for past events based off your calendar. If you had the old Outlook experience and came back from vacation as an example, usually had a pop-up with a bunch of different reminders off your calendar that already happened. In most cases, you just dismissed all of those. So they're doing that automatically for you, but you can change that setting here within the settings section. As you can see in the screenshot, this will happen late April and be complete by early May. Next announcements here is more so for admins as well. This is related to transitioning from the Microsoft phishing add-ins that you would have for reporting into the built-in report button. This is something that's been available for a while here, but they've recently announced end of support for the legacy add-ins. So if you had that, users also might be seeing two duplicate reporting messages and might get confused. 
Same thing if you're using a third-party plugin like No Before to have users report phishing messages. So you can follow the steps in the blog to get that removed or make sure that's cleaned up. This is GA though today, so something you can start to look at. Next one here is related to Outlook for iOS and Android. The recall functionality has also been available on web in the desktop client, but now extending into the mobile experience. And this is giving users the ability to retract emails that they may have sent in error. This will happen early March and be complete by late March. Another functionality here, Microsoft slowly catching up to the old Outlook or classic Outlook experience as far as all the functionality you can do. And this is allowing users to be able to bulk import .eml files. This will happen mid-March and be complete by late March. Shifting into the Microsoft 365 app section here, these next two announcements are specifically for OneDrive. This is an announcement just as far as end user impact. I always like to mention those for any users that don't have known folder move set up and having their files backed up into OneDrive. They're going to get this banner that you can see here in the screenshot for warning and giving them the ability to go through the known folder move or KFM experience to set up the backup for their files and folders. This will happen early April and be complete by early May. Other one here is just a housekeeping item for the naming conventions for shortcuts for OneDrive folders. This, as you can see in the screenshot, is using a prefix of the source location, whether that's in a SharePoint repository or within a user's folder themselves or user's source environment. And that will take in the, the consideration of even something that's been shared with you as a user. So this will just give better readability to those folders. This will happen mid-March and be complete by mid-April. Shifting into the intro section here, this first one's related to an end of life announcement, if you will, for a setting within the conditional access policies. This is the setting for require approved client app. This is specifically when we're talking about man policies with Intune and trying to enforce that. They're shifting all that functionality into the setting for require application protection policy. And this is something that you've probably leveraged in the past if you wanted to redirect users from trying to set up their Outlook on the native mail client into Outlook as an example. Um, but you just have to be aware of that. They've finally given us an end of life date basically for this, which is March of 2026. Another housekeeping item for admins out there. This is one specifically for when you're setting up multi-factor authentication. They're shifting the message of that from more information required to let's keep your account secure. I think it's a subtle change. It should be intuitive for users. But in case you get support tickets about it, you know, upon new user onboarding or you're getting questions about that, um, just know that that's changed. This will happen early March and be complete by late March. Shifting into the admin section here, this first one I don't think will affect many of us out there, especially in the SMB sector, but I just wanted to give you some purview and awareness for it, which is related to Exchange Online tenant outbound email limits. Microsoft's created their own brand new acronym, which is always fun, which is known as the Tenant External Recipient Rate Limit, or TERL. This is an extension of trying to avoid misuse or even malicious um, types of use of the Exchange Online service for outbound email to external participants. We've seen this a lot, you know, with different attackers sending out phishing attempts in mass to external participants to try to further their campaigns. But this is actually going to restrict that and flow through the basic similar settings we see for your outbound spam limits where it would actually block users from sending any more mail for a period of 24 hours until it drops below the queue or the quota. And they have this nice formula um, that they've created here that's really confusing to try to go in and, and calculate that. Again, I don't think that's going to affect uh, next to 1% of us out there for, for SMB, but it could. So just be aware of that. I have a lot more details in the blog post. The timeline on this one, it'll start April 3rd for tenants below 25 seats and then it'll continue to move up in the seat count across the month of April. Next one here was a really cool announcement for being able to have Microsoft 365 E5 security as an add-on for Business Premium. This is a lot of value you can see in that screenshot. It's over 57% uh, reduction in cost, and if you were to purchase these individual security um, features or, or add-ons separately, I still think it's a heavy price to swallow as additional costs for SMB. You're talking about 12 bucks, but if you get into a conversation about TCO or other security functionality that could really improve the health of the business, I think it's a really good conversation to have. That's GA today, so you can start to have that conversation and bolt that on to existing customers with business premium. Final section here, shifting into Microsoft Copilot. This first announcement is related to a legacy Ignite announcement that they made about this interpreter agent, 
which allows you to have an agent that would automatically translate from one language to the other, and you can actually record your voice as a user, so it makes it sound like it's coming from you as far as that translation goes. And the timelines on this one is late March and be complete by early April for the rollout. Next one here is giving users the ability to search Copilot chat sessions based off of keywords. Previously, you just have to kind of scroll through and try to find legacy chats you might have had. Uh, this is giving you that enhanced search capability. This will happen early April and be complete by mid-April. Next one here is specifically for the pay-as-you-go feature if you're utilizing agents in the consumption-based model. Uh, versus a paid subscription within uh, the Microsoft Copilot realm. But this is something that's pretty highly complex in my opinion, as far as understanding what your usage bill is gonna look like. But this is giving you a central location to manage that and view that over time. This will happen late March of 2025. And the last announcement here is related to Microsoft PowerPoint and giving you basically a library you can connect to for creating presentations with your brand images. This is either leveraging a first-party native solution with SharePoint or a third-party with an integration to this Templify library um, that allows you to create presentations using brand images. This will happen early March of 2025, so be out by the time you're watching this video. Okay, guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any of the features you're most excited about. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.